When I was a little kid, I loved the movies. My father used to take me to see the cowboy flicks, John Wayne, that kind of stuff. And once in a while, I take in a monster movie like Godzilla. But today, kids are exposed to much more gory slasher movies where sadistic violence is all over the place. Are these films, which are very popular with teens, hurting America's kids? Here's Jeff Cole. Meet some of Hollywood's biggest stars. Michael Myers, a psychopathic killer with a cutthroat attitude. Behind the hockey mask lies Jason, a mass murderer with an axe to grind. And maybe the biggest box office sensation, the man with razor-sharp claws who slices and dices his way into teenagers' dreams, Freddy Krueger. It's a boy! A record number of close to 300 horror films have been produced for theaters and home video in the past three years. The studios are banking on gore, directed at a teenage market. And the kids, well, they just think it's a scream. Critics, however, are screaming bloody murder, claiming that these so-called slasher films are costing society more than just the price of admission. According to one psychiatrist, new studies reveal startling evidence that after years of watching these films, an entire generation of American teenagers have become increasingly more and more violent. I've had a lot of young patients who have problems with, with anger and aggression uh, tell me they can't imagine giving up Jason and Freddie. And they talk at, about them as if they are close friends of theirs. Psychiatrist Thomas Radecki is chairman of the National Coalition on Television Violence, a grassroots organization that has monitored this horror film trend for more than 10 years. Radecki claims he sees some disturbing effects. You know, when I admit just today a teenager to the psychiatric unit here in Decatur, Illinois, who thinks that the sacrifice of, human, of a human being, a satanic sacrifice, is the ultimate experience, you can't tell me this stuff isn't affecting us. It's affecting us. That effect was felt in the town of Greenfield, Massachusetts, where slasher films have been blamed for the deaths of two teenagers a year and a half ago. Just a couple of days before Halloween, a bizarre and brutal murder horrified this small community. And according to police, the suspected murderer had a strange fixation with Jason, the crazed psychotic killer made so popular in the hugely successful Friday the 13th horror movie series. I think the, the producers of some of these gore movies may, may owe a couple of parents in Greenfield a child. I really do. I think the, if this uh, Jason character was never invented, possibly this murder would never would have happened. 19-year-old Sharon Gregory, a pretty and popular college freshman, was found dead in her Greenfield home after being stabbed over 50 times with a kitchen knife. Only hours after the murder, police had a prime suspect, 18-year-old Mark Branch. Branch had a history of psychological problems and had reportedly told friends he wanted to know what it would be like to kill someone. When police searched his parents' house, they found his room filled with horror books, videos, and posters, including a replica of the hockey mask worn by the movie character, Jason. He thought he was Jason. Uh, he, in the course of his life, had, had an absolute fixation towards Jason and watched every Jason movie over and over. And he just got to the final uh, chapter in his life where he had to prove to himself what it felt like to commit the ultimate ending, kill somebody. No one can be really sure what was in the mind of Mark Branch. Missing since the murder, his body was found, bound to a tree by his neck in a nearby wooded area. Police believe he strangled himself. You can't really say he got the idea to go out and kill someone from the film. Friends of Mark Branch and the murdered girl, Sharon Gregory, are still trying to sort out their feelings about this senseless tragedy. Did he have a fascination with these films? Yes, he did. I mean, he always used to watch the Jason films. He had Jason masks and everything like that. But, I don't know. Everybody's put too much emphasis on the films themselves. What would you say to people that are concerned about you, people watching these films? If I know what's re real and what's not, and I know how to get how, what's entertainment for myself, why should, let's say, that psychiatrist be concerned about what I watch? 
You've seen so many brutal slashings and decapitations and amputations. What's the big deal about punching somebody in the nose? What's unhealthy is to smile and to laugh and to enjoy this material. That's a sign that you're becoming a sadist. The people who make a business out of gore, like Tony Tampone, editor of horror film fan magazine Fangoria, believe teenagers are more sophisticated than critics realize. Parents take these films a little too seriously. Uh, kids approach these films with a good sense of humor. They know it's make-believe and entertainment. And I think that's the way parents should look at them, too. The problem for parents is that many of the films go directly to the video store shelf after being made, without a Motion Picture Association rating. Dr. Radecki would like to see legislation to require public service messages put up at the stores. That remind people that there is extensive research evidence that violent and sexually degrading material does have harmful unconscious effects on normal adult and children viewers. I mean, that's what the evidence is. You put a warning on saying, you know, explicit slash scenes, then kids are going to buy it just to see it, just because it's saying no. So, as filmmakers continue to make big bucks on blood and gore, the debate on its possible effects on society will also continue. Horror films are a cinematic roller coaster ride. People like to scream and laugh and, and have a good time, and that's what horror films provide. And let kids know that this stuff is harmful? I mean, what's the matter with telling kids? What's the matter with letting them know? Is that asking too much? Well, you know what they say. You are what you eat. Bone appetite. <laughs> well, if you think the movies are bad, the videotapes are even worse. That's because some scenes edited out of the movie can be put back into the video because there's little regulation of that. I'll tell you, I think those slasher films are awful. I can't see anything worthwhile about them.